Welcome to the second video in the Get Started Fast with Pro Tools First series. Now in the first video, we looked at some templates to get you started playing along to a basic beat and rhythm. Now templates are a great way to start, but before we move on, let's step back a bit and take a look at building a session from scratch. You can jump to the next video called Start Creating a Song if you want to carry on making music, but this video provide some really great background in understanding how Pro Tools and recording studios really work. In the last video, we started a session using a template. This time, we're gonna start a session from scratch. To do that, once we launch Pro Tools first, we'll make sure that we've got Create selected, and then instead of creating from a template, we're actually gonna go ahead and name our session. Once we name the session, we go ahead and click Create, and Pro Tools First is gonna give us an entirely blank session right here in our editor range window. So you can see here that we actually have no track types or anything populating the editor range window, which means that we've got to do that ourselves. So right now, let's take a quick look at some of the different track types that you can use in Pro Tools First. In Pro Tools First, you've got access to several different track types, including 16 audio tracks, 16 instrument tracks, 16 MIDI tracks, 16 aux or auxiliary tracks, and four master fader tracks. Now we're gonna go over each one of those track types and explain what each one does. Let's start with the audio track. An audio track allows you to record audio waveforms or audio information from any microphone or instrument plugged into your audio interface. This allows Pro Tools to capture that information, and you can use that information in your session. Let's take a look at how to set one up. The first thing you'll want to do is with your session open in your edit arrange window, you want to take your mouse and navigate to the track menu. You can click on it and then select new. You'll see the new tracks window pop up in the edit arrange window, and you can tell Pro Tools how many tracks and what type you need. In this case, we're going to go ahead and create one mono audio track. I'll go ahead and click Create, and Pro Tools First will now populate that track in the Editor Range window. Now, as an example, I want to go ahead and make sure that I'm getting a signal from my microphone here in Pro Tools First. So let's go ahead and navigate to our Mix window. You might remember in the last video, I showed you that we can get to our Mix window by simply navigating your mouse up to the Window menu and selecting Mix. There's another way we can get to our mix window, and that's by using shortcuts. Now Pro Tools and Pro Tools First offers many different shortcuts that really speed up the process and helps you do what you need to do quicker and more efficiently. Let's go ahead and learn a quick shortcut that'll get us into the mix window quickly. If you're on a Mac, you'll simply hold down the command key and then press the equal sign. That'll get you right into the mix window. Now if you're on a PC, not to worry. Same shortcut, a little bit different key command. So instead, you'll hit the control key and then the equal sign, and that'll get you right over to the mix window. Now, once you're in your mix window, the next thing we'll wanna do is make sure that we're gonna be able to monitor and record our microphone signal. To do that, we'll navigate our mouse right over to our track, and you'll notice here in the track, we've got an input and output section, or IO section for short. Now, what we're able to do in this section is choose both the input signals that we're gonna record and monitor and also our output section. Right now, we're just gonna go ahead and assign our input. So we're gonna go ahead and click right here on our input selector, and we're gonna go down to our interface and select our input. Now, in my case, I've got my microphone inserted into input three, so I'm gonna go ahead and select input three right here. Once I've selected that, I can record enable that track, and now, I should be able to see my signal right here in my meter. Now, if you need to adjust the signal for your input, you can do that on your audio interface. Let's go ahead and record a quick pass just so we can see what the audio waveform is gonna look like. Now, I'm gonna go back into my edit arrange window, make sure we return to zero, go ahead and click record, then play, and now we're gonna go ahead and record a signal. As we're recording, you can see that Pro Tools is capturing that signal as an audio waveform right here in the track. Now I'm gonna go ahead, press stop. Now we've got some audio information that we can work with. 
Next, we're going to quickly take a look at two of the other track types available in Pro Tools first, and that's going to be an instrument track and a MIDI track. Now let's go ahead and learn a shortcut that'll speed up that process. If you're on a Mac, you'll simply hit Command, Shift, and N, and that'll pull up the new tracks window. If you're on a PC, it'll be Control, Shift, N. Once we've got our new track window open, let's go ahead and create one stereo instrument track. And then now we're going to hit this plus button right here, which will allow us to add a row so that we can quickly add some more tracks without having to continually pull up the new tracks window. So let's go ahead and add four MIDI tracks as well. So let's go ahead and hit create. And now our session will populate with our new instrument track and our four MIDI tracks. The main difference between an instrument and a MIDI track is that MIDI tracks are MIDI data only. So you'll see here that you don't have inserts. So you won't be able to host plugins, but you can record MIDI on these tracks. To host the plugin is the job of the instrument track. The instrument track is simply a combination of a MIDI track and an auxiliary track, which allows us to host the plugin and do all the things we would normally do in a MIDI track. Now you might be thinking, why do I need MIDI tracks if the instrument track handles all of that MIDI information? I'm going to show you why in just a minute. So let's go ahead and pull up an instrument right here on our instrument track. So we're going to click on the insert and we're going to go down to our instrument section and then choose expand to. Remember expand to is the instrument that comes with Pro Tools first. Once we've got expand to up, let's go ahead and rename our instrument track. We'll double click on the track title here and we'll name our instrument expand. We should now be able to use our MIDI controller to preview the sound. Now with Expand 2 and many other virtual instruments, you have the ability to play more than one sound out of the same engine or out of the same virtual instrument. Now with Expand 2, you have the ability to play up to four different parts on four different MIDI channels. Now if you see here, I'm only playing one sound on MIDI channel 1, but you can see here I've got three other parts, part B, part C, and part D, that I can actually assign different sounds to and different MIDI channels. So I'm going to go ahead and select MIDI channel 2 here, MIDI channel 3, and MIDI channel 4. Now, this is what we call multi-timbral. So I'm able to play more than one different timbre or sound using the same instrument. This is where our MIDI channels come in. Let's say on MIDI channel 2, I went ahead and I selected a loop. We'll say we'll go ahead and use this progressive house loop here. In our instrument track, I'll only be able to hear one of those sounds, and it'll usually be the first MIDI channel selected. So I can still only hear that pad. But I want to be able to go ahead and access that loop on MIDI channel 2 as well. So to access all the power of Expand or any other multi timbral instrument that you might use in Pro Tools first, let's go ahead and assign those MIDI channels to play back MIDI from this instantiation of Expand 2 on that instrument track. So let's go ahead and navigate back to our mix window. Now once we're in our mix window, we're going to use our input-output section the same way we did with our audio track. We're going to go ahead and assign those MIDI tracks to Expand 2. To do that, we're going to go to our output selector. So we'll go here on MIDI track 1 and choose Expand 2. That's the instrument we've got on our track. And then we're going to choose Channel 1. Now we're going to go over to MIDI channel 2 and do the same thing on the output selector there. And we're going to choose MIDI channel 2 this time. Just so we've got good session etiquette, Let's go ahead and start naming our MIDI tracks so we don't leave everything with the generic names. Once I go ahead and click Record Enable on MIDI Track 1, or the Pad Track, and I hit some keys on my MIDI controller, you'll see that we're getting the pad sound from MIDI Channel 1 in Expand 2. Now if I go ahead and hit Record Enable on the second MIDI track, or the drum loop, and I go ahead and hit a couple of keys on my MIDI controller, you'll see that now we're able to control that loop from Expand. Now let's take a look at auxiliary tracks. An auxiliary track is basically a track that can be used to send effects from a group of tracks or as a destination for a submix, or you can even input or monitor live audio. Now it can do several different things, but typically the main use for an auxiliary track is in an effect send. Let me give you an example. You can see here I've got a couple of tracks. I've got some audio, which is a drum loop, and I've got Expand doing a little synth line. Let's give it a quick listen.
Let's go over to our mix window quickly. And here on the expand track, you can see that I've got an EQ to basically dial in some frequencies on that synth line. And on the drum loop, I've got the Dyn3 compressor limiter to give a little bit of glue and punch to the drum track. Now, on both of those tracks, let's say we wanted to go ahead and add some reverb and delay. Now, of course, we've got extra inserts available to us here on the tracks, but to be more efficient, we can use a couple of auxiliary tracks. Now, I've created a couple of auxiliary tracks here already, one of them with a reverb and the other one with a delay. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to bus our signals over to each of these auxiliaries so we can actually combine and mix different effects for our tracks. First, let's go ahead and rename our auxiliary tracks. We'll just double click on the track title here. We'll call this one Reverb. And our second auxiliary we'll go ahead and call Delay. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we assign the correct input for our auxiliaries. So to do that, we'll go right here to our Input Output section, click on Input, and instead of choosing Interface, we're going to choose Bus. Now busing allows us to be able to send signals uh, depending on what buses we have assigned to them. So for the reverb auxiliary, let's go ahead and use bus 1 and 2. And then we'll go to the delay auxiliary and we'll assign that for bus 3 and 4. Now, our buses are assigned. What we want to go ahead and do now is go over to our expand instrument track and our audio drum loop track and we're going to use our sends area and use our sends to control how much of the signal from that track or channel we'd like to send to that effect. So let's go ahead and set that up. Here on Expand, on our Sends, on our first Send, we're going to click on it. We're going to choose Bus, and we're going to put Bus 1 and 2 on the first one. And you can see here that we have a specific fader specifically just for that bus. And then we're going to go ahead and add another bus down here on the second Send for Bus 3 and 4. All right, we'll do the same thing over here in our drum loop. Bus 1 and 2, and then Bus 3 and 4. Now, whenever we click on one of these buses, you'll see that the floating fader for that bus comes up. That basically allows us to control how much of the signal we're sending to that bus. I'm going to go ahead and mute our drum loop, so the only thing we're going to be hearing right now is our synth from Expand. Let me go ahead and put it in loop here, go ahead and play it back, go back to our mix window, and now what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and click bus 1 and 2 on the Expand send, and I'm going to go ahead and turn that floating fader up. Now as I turn it up, you can hear that reverb is now very present. Now if I go ahead and click the floating fader for bus 3 and 4 on expand, I can go ahead and turn that up as well. And you can hear that we've now got delay as well. Now of course I can go ahead and add the drum loop. And we can add the floating fader for that as well. Bus 1 and 2, 3 and 4. And we can start adding reverb, maybe a little delay. So there, as you can see, we've been able to use two auxiliaries for both of our tracks without having to instantiate more than one copy of the reverb or the delay on each one of those tracks. That makes it very, very efficient, and especially if you've got a large group of tracks that you just want to affect uh, using simple effects like delay, reverb, you can use auxiliary tracks specifically for that. Now it's also worth noting that your click track is considered an auxiliary. Now that's not a track that you'll find in your new track menu, so if you'd like to add a click track to your session, just navigate your mouse up to the track menu and click Create Click Track. Now and you'll see here on the click track, the click plugin is already there and your click track is ready to go. Now the final track type that you've got available to you in Pro Tools First is the Master Fader. Now the Master Fader is quite simply a track that will control the overall level of all your tracks, audio, MIDI, instrument, auxiliaries, all of the tracks that are routed in your session that are routed to the same output. Let's go ahead and bring up a Master Fader using our new track shortcut. And we're going to make it a stereo Master Fader. And there it is, right here. Now, of course, we can hold down our mouse, click on it, and we can move it anywhere in the session, just like we can do with any of the other tracks here in Pro Tools First. As you can see here, all my tracks are being sent out to outputs 1 and 2. And therefore, on outputs 1 and 2, all those tracks are going to be summed together in one track. Let's go ahead and give it a quick listen. Now, of 
course, if I bring down the master fader, it'll fade out. As I turn it up, we increase the volume. And that's a quick rundown of all the track types available to you in Pro Tools First. This safe session includes all the elements we've just discussed. It's a great starting point that you can refine as you go along. But now let's make some music.